bring the mic a little closer. Ooh. <sighs> Some nice cool weather. Here yeah, some this morning. Sorry for all the loud. But uh I just want to do this video. I just feel like there's something hanging off this bean. Um I want to come and do I guess a story time, an explanation as to what's been going on with me. Um check out the new <laughs> Full Jones Full Review. Got some more videos coming for y'all. Um I always said I got a lot of content. I just have to upload, finish editing some, upload a lot of others. But this is gonna be a J. Jones says, not really a rant, just a story time. You know, just I'm gonna explain some things to y'all about what's been going on with me. Um, so if you know me personally. If y'all pay attention on here, check out the video I did for my Lyric Lounge group. Came from the program when my coworker Larry Kemp started called Tune In, which was the basis and foundation for the now nonprofit My Tune In. Sounds really amazing. Growth sounds amazing. Like, oh, you start this in behavioral health. <laughs> Nobody's ever done this in Arizona before. These two black dudes, really cool people, love the kids. Really good in the field, good at the work they do. Um, started this amazing program at this behavioral health company. And then it got turned to a nonprofit. That's cool. Except the fact that they basically said our program was dead for behavioral health because it wasn't getting enough hours because we weren't able to cover enough hours for it. But since it could be profitable as a nonprofit, they decided to do that. And they're trying to make it seem like it's about the impact on the kids um, and the opportunity, which it is somewhat. But the guy that fired me, Matt Pierce, and his followers, Angie, Kristen, and Nicole, they um, it's about ego for him. And they connect with kids on a different level. Um and they're really great at admin and behind the scenes stuff. But as far as this and the self-expression, they can't do what me and Larry did and what we started. But they basically took our foundation and our idea, gave us busy work to keep us busy and kind of like, oh, we'll let y'all, you know, do this thing still. We're not going to invest a lot of money and time into that anymore. And created a nonprofit. And didn't involve us in it. And then when I questioned that, because they have the board, Angie, Nicole, Chris, and these three white women that do not know anything about self-expression besides what they may watch or what they may have seen from me and Larry and the amazing kids and young adults that we work with and we present it. But they're not going to open mics. They're not <laughs> listening to certain albums or podcasts. They're not. I'm assuming. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. So, I questioned very calmly, very simple, like, hey, and I have the audio from that meeting. I record the audio from that meeting. Um, this is basically like, you know, it seems like a question I have about the nonprofit, you know, why are me and Larry not more involved? And he's like, well, you guys weren't trying to be. You didn't ask, basically. And I'm like, we was asking all the time, like, you know, what's up with the nonprofit? Anything going on? What can we do to help? What's going on? Oh, we'll let you guys know. We'll let you guys know we're working on this. We're working on that. We'll let you guys know. Okay. Um, and at the beginning, let me just say that it's all our fault for not owning and copywriting the name because we, we were working at the company that we trust, know, and love. So, um, we were like, you know, they would never do us like that. And then when it came down to it, they did us like that. And I'm pretty sure it's because one, cause of Matt's ego and then he got his followers. So they're going to do whatever he's saying. And then they see his money in it. And potentially the attention that they can get and the money that they can make off of it. And um, the idea when we, we were talking about, you know, we want to do this outside of the company, outside of behavioral health and get away from the red tape um, was to be able to help more kids in the community, um, you know, and to provide opportunities and uh, jobs for these kids 
so they can do some small things. They're learning to make t-shirts, learn to produce songs, um, get paid for recording a song, get paid to paint, do all of these things. Well, it was just music for us, which is on the music side. Um, and then the merchandise side, music and merchandise from the CDs and stuff like that in the program. <laughs> but it turned into um, inspiring some other people at the company, um, Jim Mobley. You know, she started the art program, the art therapy. Um, who else? Shout out to uh, Lakeisha Davis. Um, she started the dance group, um, Stepping Sessions. Um, and I think they're trying to do like a sports thing as well. Um, I think there's a writing group as well that got inspired by us uh, starting starting tune in. So a lot of stuff sparked up. So it was really cool to see, you know, other people want to do stuff. And it was really cool for the fact that CFSS being the dope company that it is, which I still think is a dope company, um, embracing their employees outside talents besides just the work and being like, hey, bring that here because we can help this. If this can help the kids, let's do it. Really cool. Because most jobs will be like, oh, wow, you paint. Oh, that's cool. You do you do music? Oh, that's really cool. Poach, oh, that's cool. You play sports? Cool. You exercise? That's cool. Do that on the weekend when you're not on the clock with us. But do this work the way we want you to get it done. That's how most behavioral health agencies are. Do it this way. Don't bring no extra stuff because this is how it is. Consequence, action, blah, 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 punishment. You can't do this because of that. And CFSS is not like that. Child and Family Support Services does not rock like that. So always got to take my hats off to the company. And Marsha, Marsha Pinter and everybody else at the top for the way that they built this company. I think it was going 15 years. And I was just blessed to be able to come in to an amazing setup and just add whatever little bit or a lot of bit, depending on how you look at it, that I had to add to the game. And I learned a lot from the kids and the families and other coworkers. Um, so appreciate Marsha and everybody at the top. And Penrods, thank you for creating this company. I recommend families, if you need some help with your kids, some support, go to CFSS. But I would also tell people to be leery of working with Matt Pierce, Nicole, Kristen, and Angie. Not really as much Nicole, I think she just kind of does her thing, uh, but Matt, Chris, and Angie, yeah, they're 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 tight on his ass on some, on the following tip. So be leery of them if they want to get involved with you. A um, couple people have hit me up talking about their own ideas and programs, or saying that people have reached out to them about doing stuff. And my thing, I'm telling them just um, make sure you copyright and own your stuff. Like that's all I can say. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have ill intent for them, you know, fire me. And I'm gonna get into the the the, the main uh, thing about that, but because really I'm like I was there eight and a half years, over eight years, nine months, pretty much. It was my time to go, pretty much. Like I was there, I was there, served my purpose, start to build my legacy. Well, I built my legacy and stamped my name in the history books of CFSS forever. Made my history there, but it's time for me to go on and do bigger and better things. And maybe I'll work with CFSS later with my program and my nonprofit that I'm starting because I'm going to do tune in the right way, but I'm renaming it. We have another name for it. Um, but yeah, so I'll be lit, say, I'll tell people, work with them if you, you know what I'm saying, if it's convenient. You're going to make it work. And if it's for the kids, do it. For the families, do it. But make sure you own whatever you're doing so that they can't do you how they did me and Larry. Just giving people a fair warning. People see it, but they got to hear it. So I'm telling them, and they're like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so to y'all people that's been hitting me up, Work, you know what I'm saying? Bring the programs, bring the work because it's for the kids and the families. But just be careful on your stuff. And so you're basically leasing this, your services out to them. Um, or using your services, your program, or your um, your style, your your whole curriculum, whatever it is. Uh, but don't let them do you how they tried to do us. Tried to do us because I'm an artist. Anything I create, I own. So I'll be doing a review for y'all of the whole project. First CD that we did. And carry on the second CD that we did, executive produced by myself and Larry Kemp, uh, for the pro under the program that we started. Tune in, um, which is a music, basically like a music therapy pro, music, music therapy, confidence building, and social skills building program through music, poetry, and performance for kids and young kids, teens, and young adults. Um, really dope, um, really amazing impacts. 
really fun. Like when you get to go to work and love what you're doing every day and love while you've been there, it's amazing. Um, we got to teach kids how to record, how to run a session, how to shoot a music video, how to write a poem, how to record a whole poetry album, how to record an album and put a message in there and just tell their own story is what we're trying to get them to do. Own your story, have pride in it so that nobody can use it against you. And you tell your story so nobody can tell it for you. But they uh, took that, took the basic idea of it. Tune in was taken, I believe, because it's like an internet radio station for the website. So they just put a my in front of it, my. So it's my tune in. And then they shut the door on us and was like, this is what we're doing. Um, <laughs> and I was telling Larry, like, we should just do videos just to make people aware of what's going on, because I feel like a small circle. No. And what's going to happen is they're going to push us out and they're going to present this with some faces that, you know, people aren't going to know. But they're going to push us out. I told him this like a little bit over a year ago. I was like, it seems like they're going to push us out. There's a possibility they're going to push us out. And then we're going to be left out in the cold looking crazy. Um, but I was like, you know, I don't think they'll do us like that. But, you know, you just want to be prepared. And we just kept procrastinating. Both of us were Pisces. Um, same birthday, actually. We kept procrastinating and putting off doing the video. So we didn't do it. And then this happened. And then um, I put out a video just talking about the group that I do on Friday's Lyric Lounge, when I used to do. And they called me and it was like they wanted wanted me to take the video down. Um, and I'm like, you know, why? And they're like, because it wasn't approved by the nonprofit. And I'm like, well, I don't need y'all approval. Um, I'm an artist. So I'm like, I don't need your approval to put anything out because I didn't do anything illegal in it. I didn't use any kids' faces, no kids' names. Um, I'm talking about the group and the work that I do. And then just promoting the Young Adults uh, Poetry Project uh, on SoundCloud. Check out DJ Max, um, and I'll put that link in the in the description for y'all to just check that out. Really dope. Check that album out. Um, and I'll get the link for the video, too. Really talented Young Adult. Um, so check that out. Um, but, so they fired me because I called them out, basically. I asked really calmly. I asked Matt, like, you know, it seems like y'all buried us under busy work. And stole our idea and just, you know, have us not involved with the, with the nonprofit. Um, and then he tried to be like, well, if it's about money and I'm like, I'm not saying anything about money for me, this is about recognition. Cause this is a part of my legacy for everyone. I die. People are going to be like, yeah, in that program he did tune in or, you know, it was just with the kids. Um, they're going to talk about it. I want people to talk about that at my funeral and I want people to talk about it before I'm dead. So that's why I'm going to go on this media run and make sure people know where it all started and, you know, we're the basis and the foundation. The idea that me and Larry had is the basis and the foundation for my tune in, which is a nonprofit that's going right now. Um, but yeah. And then, yeah, Matt fired me. And uh, he said it was because my billable hours was low. But I feel like there was a setup on that, too, with uh, Rahita, the coordinator I was under. Because she was always talking about. How much she doesn't like Kristen, how much Kristen is trying to get her fired and set her up and all this stuff. But I feel like she was trying to bait me in to say something bad about her, um, which I don't have a problem with Kristen personally. You know what I'm saying? Because um, she feel like Kristen has a problem with her personally. I don't think it's a, I don't, like it's not a race thing. I think it's a personality thing. She feels like they just don't mesh well. And Christian doesn't like the fact that she's super, she's real hyper, um, real up on her energy. She's from, she's from the East Coast, different fashion sense. Like everything about her is like, live your life and be happy. Try your best and be happy. And she feels like, she would always talk about she felt like Christian was against that um, in some kind of way or just made her feel weird or I don't know. But I feel like she was trying to bait me in to say stuff <clears throat> so that she could probably one day use that against me. Like, oh, well, Johnny said, and I'm saying this, and in the moment, I didn't feel like that, but I just, I be cool. Bro. I'm from the hood, man. I'm from East Oakland. You feel me? So I know you never know who you having dinner with. You feel me? So be careful what you say. You feel me? Unless it's really how you feel and you don't care. Because what I say behind your back, I say it to your face. So that's how I am. So, but I know other people, especially when they get their professional they try to get, they try to say stuff to bait you and then they'll tell what you said, but they won't tell what they said. So, excuse me. So I just parked my tongue and lip 
And y'all know my go-to. For real? Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. That's crazy. Wow. I can't believe that. Dang. That's crazy. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Um, But I feel like she was a part of setting me up to get fired. In an inadvertent way. I don't think she had any ill intent against me. Um, I'm going to find out. But I don't think she did. But I think it was, you know, people want to protect their own neck, want to protect their own job. Because people are scared to get out there and they think money is only being printed by the job they work at. And I'm never afraid of that. I know it's a billion dollars out there in the world for me and everything that I want to do to help and influence the people that I want to help and influence. And to be able to live the life that I want to live and have the access and, you know, freedom that I want to have. So I know CFSS don't cut the only checks in the world. Um, but the way people act is as if they do. So Rahita, basically the way it works, they said my billable hours was low. Rahita is the one that knows the hours and other coordinators. And she's a program manager or something like that. Other, pre, other people, they know the hours, what's available, what's needed. I only know what the people I'm connected to, the kids and teens, I'm inventing, kids, teens and young adults that I can be connected to. What's available? And then talk to coordinators. You got anything? You got anything? Talk to other people. Me and Larry, sometimes if he was on vacation or he was too busy, hey, you want to cover this kid because there's two people trying to come in. I can only work with one or I can only work for this time. Got you. Cool. Throw me some hours. Cool, cool, cool. I had my other set hours. Um, but I wasn't trying to steal hours from other people because there were coordinators like, who was it? Karina uh, was somebody. She got mad at me because I would ask. The young adults would come to me. One of them, young adult, he would come to me directly. Hey, you want to... Um, you know, I want to work with you. Cool. When are you available? I don't have support on this day. Cool. Let's lock it in for that day. And um, so with me working, telling, talking with his direct support, talking with him, it's like, cool. So I'm assuming the direct support is going to be like, oh, he's going to be working with Johnny on this day. But for the fact of sometimes Karina will be in a scramble for hours to get her, her people hours. Um, it's just how it works in behavioral health. People cancel. People get sick. Somebody just don't want to be supported that day. So you, you have a certain amount of threshold of hours you're supposed to, a limit of hours you're supposed to get, um, a set number of hours you're supposed to get. So it's like, oh, this person canceled, so I need four hours. Okay, cool. So it's four hours here. Oh, wait, no. They're working with Johnny. You're working with somebody. It can happen like that because the miscommunication or lack of communication. So, and that's real easy to fix. So cool. I'll just talk to you directly. Karina, she's a kind of a control freak too. She's cool, but she's a control freak. Like she wants to control everything so she like you need to talk to me you need to let me know that's not a problem you know what i'm saying but you know karina we've had her moments you know she'll try to talk to somebody like she their boss and it's like i don't i ain't know your team like calm down <laughs> but she cool overall though but i got it so it's like cool i'll just talk directly to the coordinators to make it way easier but if their priority is to get somebody else hours then you know i'm gonna be last and that's i'm gonna be last on that poll and it's cool but I feel like Rahita, being the manager over the whole program, over the whole Young Adult program, she knows where hours are. People will come to her. Need some hours, cause she would come to me. Can you do it overnight? Cool. I never turn down the shift. So I'm trying to get these hours to make sure I'm, you know, complying in, in with everything. I'm trying to do quality work. I wasn't just trying to pick up trash hours with anybody. Oh, just give me anything. No, I want to make sure that I'm there to help this kid and, you know, um, to help them try to achieve one step towards one goal or something. So, I feel like she was a part of this don't float him a whole bunch of stuff. And we'll have his hours be low for a while. And then on paper, we can fire him. But really, the main part is the ego of Matt Pierce. And the narcissistic person he is. He don't like people to question him. When he say something... He act like he's he's a god and he's spoken. And I'm hearing this from a lot of other people that they're like they hate interacting and working with him because he's so 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 narcissistic and so hard to work with because he comes to people so bullish and doesn't respect their um, their personal mind space and just that boundary of like he come at you just hard versus asking a question he gonna assume you fucked up is what it sounds like from a lot of people. Um, because people have been like, how do you work with him? Like, how is it? How is the work with him? How you work with him? And I'm like, you feel me? Like, I, you know, it's cool. But 
I'm a real one, bro. Like, I'm from the hood, so I know how to mix the professional, but be stern and keep my. You feel me? Like he says, he would talk to people a certain way, but he never talked to me like that. And I think it's because he knew. You say the certain thing to me. Listen, it's about to be a real problem. And I'm, a, you know what I'm saying? You coming me too hard, I'm coming right back if I feel you out of pocket. There were people that quit the company because of him because he came at them so out of pocket. And they was just like, I'm not, I'm not taking this. I'm out. Um, but, yeah, man, I think he fired me because of ego. Uh, so, it is what it is. People have been hitting me up, asking me questions. And I'm just like, look, they said my, bill, my billable was low. Um, we got in front of the, the HR person that was there. He was, you know, acting, I just don't get it. I just don't understand. Somebody in your title, I just don't understand. <laughs> um, like, he was really disappointed, but I think he knew his whole time. But I felt the energy shift even before I questioned. Like, did y'all steal our program, basically, is what I said. Basically. Um, the energy shifted. And I'm just like, so I feel like he had people a part of just, you know, give him these hours, but don't make him a priority to make sure he's getting these hours because we want our papers to be able to fire him. But I think it was parts, parts, more part of his ego. So, I got fired on a Thursday. And because I'm so great at this work, I'm such a great person because God is so good. I had a job by Monday. Now, I told myself I was just going to take some time off. But, I like to stay busy. So I took a part-time job. And then I just kicked it up on just driving lift a little more. So I'm a hustler. And now I'm going to start my nonprofit. Get my weekly program back going. Because people are hitting me saying that the kid, the program was terrible last week. And they're saying they're hitting me up. Or they want to, um, they're hitting them up to tell people to hit me up. They're trying to get the blueprint for the group and how I did it. And I'm just like, well, it's not going to be the same because I'm not there. Like, I've run it a certain way. My energy is like, it's just there. I'm a, I'm, I'm a different person. Um, and I'm an artist. It's a, it's an artist running the group. Like, I'm a rapper and a poet. So, so it's a real artist running the group. You can't just put a person, you know what I'm saying? You can't put a person that's not an artist in there and expect to run the same. So, figure out whatever y'all want to make it. And running like that, but I'm hearing it was real rough, real rough. I'm also hearing that the kids said he wants a protest, and that's just, that's that's dope. But I don't think they got to do that. Um, you feel me? Just try to. Take ownership of the group because it's really we. I really just the way me and Larry designed the thing for our groups. We wanted the kids to run it anyway, so we were just giving them ideas and stuff. So we had a lot of different creative things that we did, and whatever they liked the most, we tried to implement the most. And we didn't want to do it all the time to burn it out, but we're like, okay, let's do that on a normal, consistent basis, because <laughs> we can get one of them to get up and stand in front of the class and run that, or stand in front of the group, or in the middle of the group, or run that project or that activity, because they know it and they like it. So that's what we were working towards. And it was always just about building something for the kids that they can maintain themselves. And they just have us there just kind of, you need some you need some extra help? I got you. You need some extra this? I got you. But I wanted to make sure it was there so they felt some ownership of it because one, they'll buy into it. Because if the group is boring, then they don't buy into it. And if they just got to come every week to come, they're going to start to hate it and be bored. But thankfully, you know, they love the group. We had good energy, good rapport. They came in, they participated. It was a lot of fun, and we did it for three years. Um, I don't know what's going to happen now, but I do know once I get this, everything going, I'm going to start a weekly group, and I run my group, and I'm going to invite all those kids to come out to my group, um, and I'll do it, probably do it on Fridays um, around the same time, so that, you know, just come on over here. <laughs> come on over here. You don't want to deal with all the ego, all the fakeness, all the lies, and all the BS. Come to death row. You feel me? <laughs> but, yeah, man, it's beautiful that the kids feel a certain way. Um, I appreciate that. I'm going to make a video, a video just direct to them, saying bye to them because I didn't get to say bye to the kids. Um, but, yeah, man, I got fired. I think it was on some BS because 
I think that Matt Pierce and his flunkies wanted to, or more from Matt Pierce, wanted to, his narcissistic self and his ego was like, yeah, I can't have anybody else get attention for this or get respect or get appreciation or get whatever is they're going to get for this. Um, so let me move them out of the way so that people see just this. And I'm kind of the guy from behind the curtain that comes out acting all shy. Oh, no, you don't have to. Nah, f*** that. I'm the one, and my guy Larry Kemp, we're the ones that created that. And Larry is in a position, I get it. <laughs> he's been there, I was there for eight and a half, eight and a half years, eight years and like eight months. He was there, he's been there for 13 years. You feel me? That's where he at. He doing his thing, and my grandma said don't mess up your check. So <laughs> Larry is keeping his hands kind of out of it, doing his own thing. But I just know, I spoke up, and I got fired. He didn't speak up. He still worked there. You know, if you play the game a certain way, yeah, you can you can be around for a while. But morally, you feel me like mm, it's basically like I'm Kaepernick on like, OK, I'm taking a stance on this and I'm not going to, to, to budge. And they're like, you know, this is our company. This is our game. So if you don't play the way we want you to play. Then you got to go. And I respect that because I'm going to die on my feet, not on my knees. So you feel me like that's just my personality, like. I'm not going out like that. Um, but like I said, much love and respect to the people at the top that created the company. Um, it's just some people that are there that it's just hard to work with. And I'm hearing it from, and I heard it from a lot of other people as I was going around saying, saying goodbyes to people. And I talk to people still, you know, I talk to people outside of work anyway. Um, Cause you know, we that cool. We're not just coworkers with, you know, friends. Um, there are people that are just like, yeah, you know, I'm looking or about up to here with him and the way he acts and, He's not going to change. You know what I'm saying? That's just who he is. Um, and he rubs a lot of people the wrong way. And somebody told me when I first started working, they was like, be careful when you work with him because he he said it in a learning lab. It's like a company town hall meeting or learning uh, learning thing. He said it, but he's serious. Like, he will steal your idea and then not give you credit for it. And so be careful working with him. If you're in his circle, you're in his circle. But once he don't need you no more... He gonna push you to the side, and when she told me that, I was like, "Yeah, you know, I feel you. I'm gonna watch out and kind of watched out." And our interactions was always cool, but like, it's really true, and that's 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 how a narcissist is. They use you for everything that they can, and then once they're done with you, they're done with you. Um, but this is the thing about that: like, they don't own. You know, what I'm saying what we created. They're not artists. Um, like I said, whatever I create, I own forever. So the idea of that, you know what I'm saying? I was a part of that. I got a whole 12 week curriculum. You feel me? That they don't have, like we have everything for this. Um, so I'm bringing it back, man, the right way. Going to do it the right way. Much love to them in, in that thing. You know, they got going on with my tune in, but I just don't see it being successful because they kicked off the people that created the website and had like the media and the pictures and was running the social media. They did a lot of shady stuff. Um, and there's always stories that come out later about certain things, but I'll make sure this story gets out now. They did a lot of shady stuff to start this. Um, and I don't hold my tongue for nothing, so I'm not going to bite it. Uh, but, you know, that's the story. I got fired, but it's all good because that cause it just meant my time was up there. I'm supposed to move on and do my own thing and do bigger and better, which I'm going to do. But anybody out there... If you ever come across Matt Pierce at CFSS, just be be aware. I'm not going to tell you not to fool with him, but just be aware. Keep him at arm's distance. You feel me? Feed him with a long handle spoon. And don't ever tell him any of your ideas or show me anything unless you own it. Because otherwise, you'd be in a tough position like me and Larry was. Um, but now, it's all good. Things happen. People get fired every day. The CFSS ain't cut the, don't cut don't they ain't the only company that cut checks in the world. So, you know, I can it's a billion dollars out there for me. Um miss the company, miss the kids, the young adults, and a lot of my coworkers. But I'm not gonna miss, you know, the BS and the extra stuff. So it's all good, man. Um y'all see me repping for tune in. The originals, you feel me? Tune in originals. Um but once I get everything, the new name and all that stuff, I'm gonna put that up with those videos out. But like I said, I will be doing a video about the CD projects that we created. And I'm gonna talk about the rap battles that we did, that we started there, the uh, expression jams and like the music symposium thing, the, the days of teaching that we uh, that we were a part of, 
and um, the Expression Jam events, the record release party, album, the, the album release parties, and just the weekly program. I'm going to give y'all details of everything that we did. Um, and I'm going to be doing my program again. So it is what it is, man. On the bigger and better, I just wanted to tell that story time about like what happened. But I will be making a video directly to my kids in Lyric Lounge. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all for everything um, that I learned from y'all and from y'all willing to take a chance and listen and learn from me. Um, but I got y'all. I got a direct video that I'm going to make for y'all separate from this um, just to say my goodbyes. And um, I'm going to set something up so that we can all, you know, see each other and say goodbye in person. Um, but it's not going to be goodbye. It's going to be see you later because we're going to be working together um, again real soon. So love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Um, make Lyric Lounge whatever you want it to be, guys and girls. You feel me? Make it fun. Um, make it productive. Express yourself. You feel me? I'm not going to... I can't tell them how I did it because it was me. You feel me? It's, it was it was all of me like doing it. So I can't really tell you how to be me. Like You got to be you. Um, and they're not me. So I'm not expecting it to be the same. So um, it's going to dip. But I think if you kids take it over... And you know, make make it yours. You'll have fun with it, and it'll be what it's gonna be. And it's gonna be it's gonna be dope. But we will be working together again soon. That was my story time. Listen, y'all, I got fired, but I wasn't mad. I was just like, okay, you feel me? Okay. But now I know a lot of lessons learned, um, and I'm moving forward. And uh, yeah, so we'll be talking about the program and stuff that uh, that was created. Tune in. I'm sure we're gonna talk more about it in detail, um, and I'm just tell y'all some of the dope things that I've been able to do over the last three years since we officially announced three years ago. Um, we've been doing it five, six, seven years because me and Larry we would take our laptops to people's house to record them and just show them stuff. So, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna talk about details, of everything, so y'all can just see what I've been doing for the last five years, really, um, and how much fun we've been having impacting affecting and planting seeds to hopefully change lives for the better um and help those people impact the world in a positive way through our program tune in um which has been which was an amazing run um but it's not over and we're bringing it back real soon so um once again appreciate y'all love y'all y'all know what i say man c-i-e yeah that's my movement confidence is everything Kids, young adults, y'all know. Make sure you have that confidence in you. If you don't believe in you, nobody else will. And make sure you're ready to tell your story your way. Because if you don't, somebody else will. That's what I always tell y'all. Um, but that video is coming directly for y'all. Um, I'll make sure that I get it to the right people so that y'all can all see it. Um, yeah, I'm going to holler at y'all later, man. So uh, that's all I got for now. Let me finish this. And then, uh, yeah, I got some stuff to do today. So I'm going to finish this, and then we're going to keep it moving. But um, I'm going to holler at y'all later, man. So remember, keep your eyes to the streets, your ears on your home. Sorry. Keep your ears to the streets, your eyes on your homies, and your heart with God, and you will never go wrong. I am Jay Jones, a.k.a. iPhone Jones, a.k.a. Everything Jones. Appreciate y'all. I'm out.